Hey guys, this is Eric Tarr for the ProAudioFiles.com. This is my second video in a two-part series where I'm demonstrating how you can measure the processing that takes place within some of your audio effects plugins by using an impulse response. In my first video, I took you through the basic steps that you can follow, where you start out with an impulse response sound file, send it through one of your audio effects, and print the output. After you print the output to a new sound file, you can load that sound file into a convolution plugin. Now that convolution plugin represents the processing that takes place in your original audio effect. I also talked about in that video that this kind of technique works well for some kinds of audio effects, but it doesn't work well for other kinds of audio effects. If you need to get up to speed, make sure to check out that video too. In this video then, what I wanna do is expand upon that idea and use an impulse response, not just to measure the processing within one audio effect, but actually to use it to create custom audio effects that I can use in a convolution engine that are not just based on one plugin, but actually a combination of many plugins. And the thing to know is, as long as I'm using plugins that fall in this category that work well with an impulse response, things like equalization and filtering, echo and delay, some kinds of reverb, as long as I just stick with those kinds of plugins, I can combine these effects in all different ways, in series and in parallel, and then take an impulse response of the combination of these effects, the entire system, capture one impulse response, load that entire impulse response into a convolution engine, and now I've essentially created my own unique kind of effect where it's pretty much up to your imagination to come up with your own ideas. So let me show you what I've got here in this session. Just like before, I'm starting out with an input sound file. It's an impulse. The entire sound file has amplitude of zero except for one sample here at the beginning. What I was doing before, if I switch over to my mix window, is I had sent this impulse through some of these effects. Delay, reverb, equalization, that kind of thing. What, I'm, what I've done now is I've made those plugins inactive. Then what I'm going to do is actually bus this signal from the input on here on bus 2 over to a bunch of different auxiliary tracks. So essentially these are going to be running in parallel with each other. So I've got you know a handful of these uh, auxiliary tracks running in parallel. Then what I've done is I've gone in on each one of these tracks and inserted different effects. So I've got some delays and I've got some equalization. So now what I can do is send that signal down each one of these auxiliary channels, capture the impulse response of all of these things working together. So to take you through what I've got and then I'll print it, you'll be able to visualize it. What I'm gonna do is take this input signal, and I've essentially got it running over time where I'm gonna have different delays. And I've kind of got it organized, so hopefully it'll be easy to understand. I start out right off the bat and I've got just an eighth note delay. So that's all that's happening here with this individual uh, mod delay here. Now I'm gonna take that delay. I'm also gonna send it through a low pass filter that has some resonance right here. So I have it set up kind of based on uh, 16th notes in the measure so that you know if I have an eighth note, it's gonna be the third 16th note in the measure. Then on my next auxiliary track, I have a dotted eighth note or essentially the fourth 16th note that would occur in an entire measure. So nothing else going on here except the digital delay within this particular plugin. Then I also send this through another uh, kind of low pass filter with resonance. So I'm doing spectral processing and delay on each one of these channels. Then what I've done up here is you know, you can see that I've got it set up so that this would be the third 16th note, fourth 16th note, seventh 16th note, eighth 16th note in the measure. So I've got a quarter note here just for organization purposes, then followed by another dotted eighth note. So that'll accomplish that seventh uh, 16th note delay. Then I've got another here low pass filter with different cutoff frequency, different resonance, and so on. I think you get the idea here. Now I've got a half note going on, another low pass filter, and so on. This continues for the remainder of, I've got these all tempo synced so it'll last 
these delays will all occur throughout one measure so that then you know I've got these daisy chain together back to back in series going through in this case I've got basically a, a band pass filter with resonance on the low and high cutoff frequencies this continues for all of them I've got them daisy chain together it actually helps me organize it where I've got you know half notes quarter notes uh, but you can set all these things up however you want whatever makes it intuitive the thing to understand is you know I've set up what appears to be a pretty complicated set of plugins pretty complicated system all these things running in parallel which if I send the impulse through the impulse is basically going to be delayed by certain amounts and then also have some spectral processing at different frequencies depending on where the uh, impulse shows up throughout the measure so it looks like a pretty complicated system but if I just send an impulse response through it then what I can do is load that impulse response into a convolution plugin and not have to worry about you know four or eight or however many 12 auxiliary tracks and all these different plugins now I've essentially created an impulse response I can load it up in any of my other sessions without even having to worry about all these other tracks right here I create my own custom effect custom impulse response which makes it so powerful without having to load up all these other plugins I just load up one load the impulse response and I'm on my way so let me go ahead and capture this impulse so I'm gonna send it here through bus it from this track through all, all my auxiliary tracks and it's gonna end up over here on these two tracks I have over here I've got two of them because another powerful thing about it is I can use stereo panning so I haven't talked about that yet but I have a bunch of panning just dialed in ahead of time whatever it's gonna be where it's kinda gonna bounce back and forth I'm trying to create this echo that bounces back and forth I'm gonna print all those impulses on these two tracks one for the left one for the right I have two audio files, two mono audio files that I'm going to load later on into my convolution plugin. So go ahead and print this uh, impulse response. I've got it time synced, so you're also going to hear a click here initially, so you can hear when they're going to line up. So here we go. So with the click, might not be able to hear the impulses that well, but I can zoom in on them. You can see that I kind of have this thing bouncing back and forth, and the impulse response is showing up here, uh, time sync to the grid, so that I have these 16th notes going on at the end of the measure. So by itself, it doesn't really sound very musical, obviously, but the power of it is you can take these impulses, load them into the convolution plugin, and now you've got a pretty cool effect. So I've got these two sound files, left impulse and right impulse. I'm going to go over here. I've already got, I'm going to just, you know, uh, record some piano and then bust that piano over here to my effects plugin. So why don't I send one of these over here? How about bus 35, 36 over here? Cool. All right. So for now, I'm just going to uh, not worry about my convolution. So let's go ahead and print some piano. I'm going to switch back over here to my edit window, move on to a different place in the timeline. I'll listen to a measure of click and then just play some basic chord progression on the piano. Better arm this track. All right, I've got a, just a virtual instrument loaded up for this. So it wasn't the best performance. That's not the point of it. Uh, you know, you can hear very simple pattern, four chords going on. I'm even gonna go ahead just for uh, simplicity's sake, go ahead and quantize this so that I've got them just the quarter notes, right? Nothing complicated at all in the original piano performance. Where you can get creative though is if I go over here to my convolution engine I'm gonna go in here now and load up some sound files one thing I'll point out is I've loaded up this is the you know convolution plugin from waves IRL and I've loaded it as a multi mono now I've got one impulse that I can load for 
the left channel and one impulse I can load for the right channel. It can even be more complicated if you want to do true stereo and all that kind of stuff. So let's load up an impulse. I've got one for the left and one for the right. So if I can go in and find my session where I've got it stored, I can find some sound files. I've got uh, left impulse right here. Now I've got my left channel loaded up. I'll switch over to my right side. And I've got the right side loaded up here as well. That was just what, from when I was testing, but I can show you. It's nothing more than loading those two sound files going on from inside of your session here. All right, so I've got my two impulse response files. I've got a bust over here. Let's listen to the piano, and then I'll bring in, maybe bring this here. Listen to what I've got. So by itself, pretty boring. All right. Why don't I loop it a little bit? So hopefully what you can hear is all those delays, all that spectral processing and filtering that's taking place, this is a custom effect that I've essentially designed based on all these plugins together. But the piano itself is only going through this convolution plugin. That's it. I've captured the impulse response. Now it's just a matter of loading in the correct sound file. Now I have tempo synced delays and spectral processing and filtering for a very creative effect. Stereo effect bounces back and forth side to side. It can add a lot of movement and it's really up to your imagination to decide what you want to use this for, how creative you want to be. Again, any kinds of delays you're going to use, spectral filtering, uh, you know, equalization, anything like that, some kinds of reverbs, those are all great candidates for using this combined impulse response where you put all these effects in parallel and in series. So I'd love to see what you guys can come up with this. If you have your own ideas, how you can use this kind of technique of just an impulse response to capture very complex, complicated systems, but simplify them by capturing the impulse response and then just using it in a convolution plugin. That's all there is for today. Take care, guys. I'll catch you next time.